Okay, uh, getting right down to business with this movie, um, I recently finally saw um, Dark Shadows um, this weekend, and uh, needed to say this movie is um, interesting. Um, first, um, let me give you a little bit of, of just of how this movie's reaction was, um, from the trailer to what Tim Burton said, all the way to the reviews leading up to what I feel. Um, when the trailer first came out, a lot of people uh, started basically screaming betrayal. And these were people who were big time um, fans of the soap opera that uh, was um, aired in the 70s. Um, a lot of people did not like the fact that it looked at more like a comedy instead of a dark uh, satire drama. Um, this uh, pretty much did not pique too many people's interest um, and it got to the point where Tim Burton himself did not like the trailer um, he wanted to, to have a, a trailer that sparked a dark serious tone and the trailer they uh, produced uh, to show more of like a comedy with the music of the 70s being played in there um, overall I saw bits and pieces of the trailer I didn't really it didn't draw my interest too much um, but uh, I was something I just want to check out because it was something I never heard before and being that I'm seeing this from fresh without having any knowledge of the TV show um, it was kind of fun to see what Tim Burton would do with it mind you Tim Burton's record when adapting sh um, um, stuff that was already um, popular in the days whether it's literature or something um, like Broadway um, or movies or TV shows based on um, that he made into a movie is not that great uh, it's not bad as many people turn out to turn out to say it's bad but it's not that great either um, I, I guess I can start probably with um, Sleepy Hollow I was pretty disappointed with Sleepy Hollow um, I liked the acting um, to a certain extent but I felt that for some reason uh, even though he captured a dark serious tone of what Sleepy Hollow is uh, it, it just didn't feel uh, all that great. I think he focused too much on um, visual and costume design rather than story. It just didn't feel like a strong story, at least by my opinion. Um, I'll, I'll really walk another one. Um, I, sorry, Charles in the Chocolate Factory. Uh, Giant Depp to me was uh, he did not fit that role at all. Um, and it, it, the film alone. I, I didn't felt they needed to update it. I felt they could have just kept it at the same time period and it would just work fine. But I think updating it really hurt the uh, matter. And how it struggled down the end, uh, it really bothers me a little bit. I was very, very disappointed at that at Charles and the Chocolate Factory. Um, Alice in Wonderland, I actually kind of liked. I actually did. I thought that people were a little too harsh on Alice in Wonderland. And, um, however, I will say... Um, to Tim Burton's uh, disadvantages, he should have not called it Alice in Wonderland because technically speaking, it's not Alice in Wonderland. It's a totally different story uh, based on a totally different theme. This is Alice returning to Wonderland um, after being away for so long. Um, and that's where I think a lot of people got a little upset about but otherwise it was a different take and I actually kind of enjoyed it for what it was um, granted I didn't think it was made for kids even though I got a PG you can argue that should have been a PG-13 but uh, that's a different story for a different time as for uh, as for the, the barber shop of Fleet Street uh, Sweet Todd. It was just weird. I, I had a very problem with the the song. Some of them. Um, it, I know it was based on a Broadway show. It was just weird. Uh, it was not terrible. It's just I I just didn't get what was such a big fanfare about it. But it, it had its good moments to me. It had some missed moments as well. But it was it, it just uh, I don't know. It just wasn't my cup of tea. Um, and now we have Dark Shadows. Um. I will say that the movie is based on, it's, it starts out with a very, very good uh, introduction of how Bonnabas Conway became a vampire. Apparently, uh, um, the family had moved to start to keep the family bloodline strong, both in, not in, uh, both in Europe and both uh, in the United States. They built the, um, the Collins Mansion, which um, is really well done. I actually liked it the way they did the design. 
and uh, um, the family have grown strong. It was a well-respected family. Um, Collins, from what I've seen from the beginning, was a player. He had an affair with a woman, little, uh, but uh, he did not love her, and that caused her to uh, commit some great crimes because she was a witch, and she used her powers to kill both her family. And then, uh, after seeing Collins' true love, he she used her witchcraft to kill her. Um, Bottomless Collins um, jumped off the um, that steep cl um, that cliff. Um, he fell hard, uh, but uh, but realizing he was not dead, uh, he realized something was terribly wrong, and he was uh, hereby um, cursed to be a vampire. Um, this witch was was brilliantly played by. Uh, uh, by Eva Green. I actually thought she was actually pretty good in this movie, and I'll get two more of the characters later on. Um, cursed him, um, basically turned the whole town against him. He's called a murderer. Um, they convinced the um, the townsfolks to bury him alive. Um, and uh, you can hear him say, let me out, but uh, he was already buried. And uh, fast forward to the 70s, where um, you have this woman who was supposed to be the reincarnation, I believe, of uh, his loved one uh, being the governess uh, for the youngest son. And right there, you get to introduce some of the characters. Um, you get to introduce um, the daughter um, of Michelle Pfeiffer, which was played by um, Chloe uh, Moretz. Uh, you get to introduce uh, some of the other characters like uh, Hella Bella Carter, who played an alcoholic um, therapist. And you also uh, met this kid who everybody calls Eddie Monster. Kind of unfair. Um, and you met um, also Jackie Earl Hurley's role as the gardener. Um, a scene started happening uh, where she had, she saw where this uh, governess saw that this ghost and this ghost is basically just collapsed in the ground but she never mentioned anything to no one and then we cut through the fact where you have all these um, construction workers um, digging up the same exact spot where Collins um, um, casket was he escapes he kills all of them and um, this is where the film takes a different turn where he's like a fish out of water and he sees the McDonald's side he sees all these girls walking about with crazy costumes he sees people eating food he sees a movie theater and eventually he makes it back to the Collins um, home. The Collins home is uh, is not what he remembers it, um, but he rec uh, and he puts uh, Jack and her in some kind of trance to make him his servant. Um, he asks if uh, many Collins was still left. He does. He says yes. Uh, he meets the remaining distant relatives, and so the film picks up there. He makes a deal with Michelle Pfeiffer after he explains that he is indeed Bonamus Collins, um, the one he saw in the picture. Um, at first, he didn't believe her, believe him, and he actually had plotted to stab him at one point. Um, but once he reveals certain secrets of the house that only um, the person who had built the house or was there when the house was built, no. Uh, he was convinced that uh, she was convinced that he was uh, Bonamus Collins, and uh, from there, Bonamus Collins, you can see that um, he's meeting the family, which he already had, but now he's sitting there eating food with him. He's introduced to the doctor. He's um, basically uh, <laughs> he basically realized that the family fortune was almost all but gone. He's also realized that the family is not uh, well respected in the community and that's largely because um, their fish market industry has been gobbled up by the under competition which later turns out to be the same witch who uh, survived um, hundreds of years um, or at least 183 years um, depending on what you guys uh, want to call it. Uh, she dominated the whole industry and she became famous. She finds other Collins is alive after her reports of murders, how the neck got ripped off, visit him, and yet um, she shows a big, um, a bit of a hatred and also a bit of still love. He still wants him, but he hates him at the same time. Um, Collins, of course, don't like her, you know, and yet she doesn't. He doesn't really do much to attack, her, even though uh, he could at every moment, but he he doesn't do it. Um, and that's largely because he wants to build the family business. He wants to build the family fortune. Unfortunately, that's been proven easy said and done. I mean, he did try to get um, one of the fishermen to talk to um, the person. He's slowly building it back up, but the witch is dead set against that. Um, we have we find out that the family isn't all what it cracks up to be. Um, I'm just gonna lay it down. The, they're not the nicest people you ever want to meet. Uh, he tries to develop a strong relationship with the um, the governess, who is the spitting image of his long lost love. Um, 
basically talking to her, reading books with him, um, explaining how much he he, um, he truly cares for her. Um, however, he is constantly distracted by the fact that a you have a um, a doctor who supposedly who knew who found out by putting him in a trance and uh, wanted to try and help him by giving him some kind of blood something, a blood thinner, or replacing his blood with human blood so he can be human again. Only to find out that she was uh, just using the blood so she can be immortal. She gets killed off. Um, there's an incident where um, the witch has found out that he really don't love her. And she also finds out that he knew the whole time that she was the one who killed the family in love. Uh, which I will get to in a minute. Yeah, I will definitely get to that in a minute. Um... We have the situation with Chloe Moretz's character, and um, spoiler alert if you haven't seen this uh, about, she was a werewolf. Uh, you have um, the situation where uh, where she tries to turn the village people uh, against him uh, again, only this time it, it was uh, in reverse, and uh, we had that epic fight in the mansion, and the ending, which can't really say it's an ending. <laughs> I really can't say it's an ending, but um, it was like deja vu all over again, only this time um, she was uh, alive, or at least uh, from, what I, from what I gather was, I uh, wasn't really that woman who jumped off, uh, but uh, somehow the, the spirit of this woman that he loved a long time ago um, have emerged and in the film just basically ended him with uh, her holding her in, uh, in her arms kissing her and with the water hitting him and he said the curse was finally broken which I am not buying for one second okay I'm gonna get the good points out first because uh, to be fair to this movie I know that a lot of people Especially those um, who does reviews for that guy in the glass dot com have not had too much kind words for this movie. Um, um, there were people who also um, have talked about it on YouTube that had mixed feelings with this movie. I think the one who's actually was the most fairest, to be honest, was um, the cinema snob. He was actually the most uh, fairest review. Um, that I've seen about this film because it, what he felt I pretty much felt the same way uh, but there's more to um, this movie in terms of my feeling towards this film than what he said I understand where he was coming from uh, but uh, in my own opinion this film could have been a lot more better have it stayed with a dark um, serious tone um, which is kind of hard to believe that I'm saying this because uh, many people will say oh you need comedic film comedic tones with a film like this. I think that having it try to be comedic hurt this film more than uh, people realize. Um, and because a lot of the jokes that they're trying to put in there, I just didn't get. I just didn't laugh at it. Uh, I didn't laugh at the fact that they tried to make a funny scene where he and the wish was like getting it on the roof and they're falling all over the place. I, I just thought it was unnecessary and just basically looked ridiculous. Uh, However, to say this film is awful, horrible, I, I can't say I, it is, because for the simple fact is, I was drawn into it throughout the first half of the movie. I really was into this film. I really wanted to know more about the characters. And as this film got on, it got from very good uh, to, uh, okay, and then the ending is just like, what the hell, man? It's just horrible. Um, and that's largely for a few reasons. One, with the exception of Eva Green and Michelle Pfeiffer from time to time, I didn't care about none of the characters in this movie. I really didn't. I think Eva Green I cared a lot because there was something about her role. She was having fun with this character, and you saw she was having fun with this character. I really did enjoy her performance, um, and the fact that her death scene, and, and spoiler again, um, the way how they handled her death scene when she was falling apart like a, like a glass mirror being broken, uh, where she showed the heart uh, of her, and there was nothing but like hollow glass, and she died being hollow, this black hollow cold person. I actually thought that was pretty cool. I actually liked her performance a lot more than I actually thought I would. And um, that, that's kind of surprising. Um, Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, she was actually pretty good I, I, in some points. And then just so dense in the others. I, it was like almost like seeing a tale of two different, um, two different films when it came to her. It really did. Um, 
what else can I tell you? Um, then that's it. I did not care for Jack Arnold's performance, although he was a waste of space. You can put anybody there, that, and he would probably get the same performance, if not better. Um, Johnny Depp, surprisingly, uh, I was not impressed with his, his, his portrayal of Bonham's comments at all. I, I really was surprised on how unlikable bland his character was um and that's surprising because most of his films with Johnny De with um Tim Burton is very good and even the ones that I often question he's actually bringing some kind of depth to his character and this one I just didn't feel it I I really didn't feel it and it's not because I was a fan of the um the Dark How TV series I didn't even know that it was based on a TV series until somebody brought it up to my attention uh it's just that he was not very good at at this performance nobody else was very good Chloe Monster was uh, was just basically filler. I, I didn't see. I didn't get any feelings. Or uh, they tried to make her erotic as a hip, as some kind of hipster, and uh, it just didn't work. I did not care for this character at all. Did not care for Helen Bonham Carter's character. Didn't even care for the girl who was supposed to be the reincarnation of his love. I did not care for any of them, um, and that's largely because there was no true character development with it. Um, and at least by my opinion, I. I didn't feel anything for these guys, and and the fact that they make him um, such an unlikable character did not help matters. And that was another thing about this film that really bugs me. Um, they try to sympathize with you with, with the curses, but he do things that is un is impossible to sympathize with. He kills people and said, "I'm sorry, I'm I'm sorry, that don't cut it. You you're still a murderer, bro. What's, uh, you, I can't feel for you. That's how it is. You know, you you don't show no remorse. You don't have any empathy. Why should I feel for you? I, I heard that the character who played him um, in the TV version had empathy, have sympathy. There was some kind of humongous character development. This I did not see. Um, in fact, it really must have missed it a lot. I mean, one of the things that really scratched my head was when he was sitting there getting high with the uh, with the fellow hipsters, you know, talking about peace and, and love and all that stuff. And he's saying, I'm sorry because i got to kill you now. And he kills them um, off camera, of course. But it, it just didn't feel right. There were some sexual undertones with him and Bella Collin. I'm not going to tell you what that is, but why was that in that film? I mean, that's... Uh, that. That bothers me. And then another thing about this, um, and this is why I said the ending was just horribly bad. They try to throw a lot of stuff at you without explaining anything about this. Uh, and has no rhyme or reason to be there. Um, like I said, that Colleen Monsworth's werewolf thing just came out of left field. Uh, because that one time she actually hinted that she was a werewolf throughout the whole film. And then all of a sudden she, all of a sudden we just found out she was a werewolf. And I think her... A brother or cousin actually hinted that she that that she couldn't die or something, and then, uh, or then the she was basically you know blasting him. But all in all, her performance here it just was a waste. It it really was. Another thing that also bothered me was the fact that um, we had a little bit of character development with the with the girl, um, her love interest, where we found out she was actually in a mental ward and we found out that she was actually guided by um, the soul of the loved one to meet there um, that was interesting but at the same time it just felt wasted because none of the characters was on screen enough for me to care um, and that's the whole big thing and I just didn't care uh, and especially after the film goes on the more um, it played on the less and less I, I got interested in the film um, but one thing that really bothers me and really solidifies is how much of a douchebag this family was. I think it was the father. In, this, in one scene, um, Bonimus finds out that he um, is stealing from the family fortune. Uh, he gives them two options. Instead of killing him, you can stay here and be a father um, to your son who desperately needs it. And, uh, or you can leave and never come back. I'll give you enough money to live off your selfish greed. And you're thinking, okay, he's going to probably choose his son but no he just leaves he's like freak it I'm gone <laughs> I mean so obviously he didn't care for the for the um for the son and the thing that I, I it made me not like this character more but it made me not like um Bonimus because he's biased he's talking about honor and respect but yet he's killing innocent people so what's the point of that I know he's a vampire but um uh, he's killing them and then I'm supposed to suspect and have sympathy because he says sorry it just doesn't work that way <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to say that um the ending again it, it just came out left it was almost like when you when they went towards the end they didn't know how to end it I mean when you look at the ending it's just it is like wow you really didn't know how to end this film um you just 
struggled. And again, when I say when I first saw the film, I was into it. The story was good. The story was strong. When I reached the middle with these characters, it was like, okay, where are we going to go from here? It's just like they did not know where to go next. And then when they reached the ending, it's just, they try to throw everything at once, and it's just, it was a big giant mess. Um, I did like the fight scene between him, between Bonimus and the witch. I did like that, um, that scene. That was awesome. Um, I liked the fact that they, um, uh, they, they made her look like she was now made of shadow glass because she was hollow inside. Um, uh, again, there were some good points in this film, but I felt that, um, the jokes... For lack their own word, just mostly misses. I did not laugh too much. I didn't even laugh at the McDonald's sign that he that he thought it was like some kind of symbol from the devil. I did not laugh at that. I did not laugh at the fact that he didn't know what a television is. I did not laugh at some of the stuff he was saying to some of the family members. It just wasn't funny. I'm sorry. It it wasn't funny. And uh, and again, it, if they would have kept it as a dark, serious film, I think it would have been better received than what it is now. But uh, they they try to be both, and it didn't work. It, it just didn't work. Um, again, I don't consider this a terrible, terrible film. I, I don't even consider it to be one of the worst films I've seen this year. Uh, for the larger fact is there were some things I did enjoy about the film. I loved the, um, Eva Green's act performance in this film more than even Bombas Connors' performance. Um, I loved the way she betrayed that character. She really was the only one that really put an effort and had fun with the character, and I actually enjoy watching the, her in this film more so than in the whole entire other cast combined. Um, the, the set design was beautiful. I liked it, the beautiful set design. I actually liked, liked it, the costume design. I actually liked it, the visual. I thought it was a beautiful, well done film. Um, and from time to time, the story from the beginning at least actually was working. Uh, and it's just, uh, it fell apart back down the end. It really did. Um, so, um, it's a fair movie. It's not a terrible movie. It's not a good movie. It's a fair movie. Uh, a two-star film. Um, because, like I said, I still was interested in this film. I stuck with it to the whole, the whole, th whole thing. I didn't get bored about the, in, uh, the um, whole entire film. Um, the pacing was actually pretty good. I actually enjoyed the pacing. But... If you want to sit there and tell me, is this a great movie? I'm not going to tell you that. If I'm, it, do I consider this the worst ever Tim Burton film? No. Um, I still have a, a list of Tim Burton films uh, that I consider the least favorite of mine. Beetlejuice is definitely up in that because I thought Beetlejuice was just boring. And even though I saw it twice and I still don't see the love fair, but a lot of people... Um, like his work and that's the thing about this film and that's the one thing I will say about Tim Burton I, I think people need to understand something um, no matter what film he's doing whether it's an adaption from some other literature or TV show or the movies or is it something of his own Tim Burton has a certain style he has a certain gothic style and he's never going to change that style again he knows who his audience is and he's only catering to that audiences he makes got the films you know they're gonna have a gothic feel to, to it you know they're gonna have a satire to it uh you, you, you know what you're getting when you get into tim burton film so when i came in this film i pretty much know okay expect this this and that to happen and i for the most part i did see that in this movie um the only thing I will say is, could you please get other actors besides your wife and Johnny Depp? Um, because I didn't think that Johnny Depp fit this role. I, I'm just keeping it real. I did not care one t th one bit about Johnny Depp's role in this film. And I think it's time for him to start moving away from that, at least for now. Get somebody else a, a, a acting job. Because... Um, it's becoming very clear that people, a lot of people, including myself, is getting a little tired of seeing that. You want to keep Danny Elfman, that's fine. I, I don't have no problem with that because, to be honest with you, Steven Spielberg and George Lucas keeps John um, John Williams uh, for their music. They always call him first. So, Danny Elfman is good for gothic uh, themes. I have no problem with that. But for the actors, switch up the lead roles a little bit, man, because um, clearly this was not fit for Johnny Depp at all in this movie. Um, but as I said before, um, he has a certain style to it. And the only people, and if you are a fan boy or girl to the Dark Shadows, that's fine. But don't expect him to follow too much into the uh, into the um, genre that you guys grow in love. If you didn't even like John Tunburn to begin with, chances are you're not going to like his films anyway. So... I can't really tell you uh, any, any um, encouragement of the film. I can only tell you what I felt about the film. And for me, it was fair. I, I, I enjoyed the first half. 
right the um, the the second third of the film a struggle and then the last last half of the film is just like what the hell just happened that's how it is so two stars um I definitely think for if you're a Tim Burton fan, you probably like it more. The simple fact is it does have that Tim Burton feel to it, um, and uh, I think people will enjoy it more just for that. Uh, but in terms, if you're not a Tim Burton fan and you're just or you're a fan of this genre, you may hate him a lot. I know a lot of people who love the um, <laughs> the um, the old um, Dark Shadows hated this film with a passion. Um, those who did not like Tim Burton to begin with just didn't like this film. Um, I'm just going to be fair. There are some things I like about the movie, so uh, it works better for me. Um, but to me, it's not something that I'm jumping for joy over. It was a mildly disappointing. It was a disappointing film, um, but not to the extent where I just actually hate it with a passion. There are many films I've seen over the years that I hate with a bloody passion, and this is not one of them. So two stars uh, for is um, visuals um, the score was pretty good uh, the pacing was good even great performance was great the first half of the story was wasn't was was good so it gets the two stars for that it had its great moments um, from from beginning to end but other than that the fact that it lost focus down a stretch to the unnecessary twists uh, in the in the in the uh, in the ending as well as the <laughs> as uh, <laughs> well as the uninteresting bland characters in this film I just can't I just can't recommend it as a good film sorry guys um, but uh, it's just what it is um, if you guys seen the film let me know what you think about it did you like it didn't like it uh, did you wish that Tim Burton could have done something different with it let me know in the comment section and until then this is Jason E7 saying take care